As disturbing evidence of Beijing's election manipulation emerges, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is in full panic and damage control mode. Rather than take the findings seriously, Trudeau is downplaying and dismissing the allegations as conservative griping. But the facts paint a chilling picture of China's attempts to intimidate and propagandize its way to a liberal victory in 2019 and 2021. Former conservative MPs described feeling under relentless attack. Riding level results show unexplainable deviations from polls. Liberal nomination contests raise alarming questions about foreign influence. Yet Trudeau stubbornly pretends all is well, while his government drags its feet on investigating complaints. With our sovereignty under siege by China's aggression, we need our leaders to take election interference seriously. Trudeau is not that leader, and after the investigation concludes, he should never be a leader again. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. In another recent news conference about housing and affordability in Canada, Trudeau pledged even more money for vain projects that will not benefit Canadians. All in a desperate attempt to gain back the young voters who now see Pierre Polyev and common sense conservatism as their saving grace. However, one thing Trudeau was desperate to change and deflect from that will not give him back the advantage with young voters is the ongoing inquiry about Chinese interference in Canadian elections. Trudeau was so happy doing what he does best and announcing billions of taxpayer money funneled into failing and useless pet projects that he was stunned to find that all journalists wanted to ask him about the recent news and revelation coming out of the election interference inquiry. Trudeau was asked a simple question. What does he think of the liberal MP Han Dong's actions, now that the inquiry has tabled an extensive document detailing all of the suspicious actions he has committed and ultimately concluded that there was in fact clear evidence and pointers to Chinese interference in the Canadian elections and how it benefited Dong and negatively affected innocent conservative MP Kenny Chu? However, Trudeau was not born corrupt and slimy yesterday, and as such he took this very simple question and contorted it to what he deemed fit to answer, and gave a virtue signaling speech about how fair the elections were and how there definitely was no interference. But the Liberals are hard at work trying to figure out what's wrong. Um, uh, Prime Minister, you and your members of your cabinet have defended Mr. Dong, saying you believe he did nothing wrong. Yesterday at the public inquiry into foreign interference, an intelligent document was tabled stating that Mr. Dong told Chinese officials that even if the two Michaels were released right away, opposition parties would view the PRC's action as evidence a hardline strategy against China works. The document also said Mr. Dong provided advice on what might, quote, help to placate public opinion and provide valuable talking points to the Liberal Party. When did you learn of CSIS's account of these conversations? And does this information change your opinion of Mr. Dong's fitness for caucus? Uh, foreign interference is a real challenge uh, everywhere around the world. We know that certain countries and uh, actors uh, are engaged in trying to disrupt and attempts to disrupt uh, our institutions, our businesses, our economy, uh, and our electoral processes. Uh, that's why in 2015, uh, we started to work on uh, protecting our country more from foreign interference. We created oversight bodies that watch both our elections process, uh, that uh, oversee all the work our national security agencies uh, do, uh, and we've continued to give them more and more tools. The ongoing uh, Foreign Interference Commission is an important way of highlighting uh, some of the challenges we face and some of the solutions that we've put forward to keep our democracy safe. And I want to reinforce to everyone that our expert nonpartisan panel looking at the 2019 and 2021 elections confirmed that those elections happened in a way uh, where the integrity held, where the outcome was decided by Canadians. Uh, obviously, this uh, commission is ongoing, uh, and I look forward to being part of it. I will be testifying before the commission uh, next week. Uh, this is an important way of uh, answering these questions, of engaging with this uh, in the right forum. He completely avoided the question regarding Han Dong and what he thinks of his actions and fitness to run for office now that it is confirmed that a Liberal MP accepted foreign money and worked in the interest of the Chinese government and its ambitious plans to control Canada. It was such a dumbfounding display that the interviewer had to ask the question again and highlight the part about Dong and him running as a Liberal MP, only for Trudeau to condescendingly answer the same way and dodge saying anything incriminating. 
as if he thinks it is the smartest thing to do when you are being accused of treason against Canada in favor of another global superpower in China. With all due respect, you didn't really answer the question in that, does this information change your opinion of Mr. Dong's fitness uh, uh, for caucus? And also, in light of the testimony and the documents you've, you've heard, uh, will you allow Mr. Dong to return to caucus, and why have you not done so already? Obviously, these are ongoing conversations that need to be taken very seriously, and we are. This commission is an important moment for Canadians and for, uh, for our institutions to really take stock of everything we've done uh, to keep Canadians safe and look at what more might be needed to be done by our intelligence services uh, to keep the integrity of our democratic institutions and our economy uh, whole. That's why I'm looking forward to participating next week in the Commission's work. He went on to act as a caring and strong Canadian leader, talking about acknowledging that foreign actors might be middling in Canadian elections, just like they do with every other nation. Except we are not talking about every other nation. We are talking about Canada and we need the Canadian Prime Minister to answer and explain how this level of interference took place and how it will be avoided in the future. But Trudeau was too busy talking about how much hard work his personally appointed independent panel and the RCMP and all other Canadian intelligence institutions did to get to the bottom of the issue at hand, completely forgetting to mention or comment about the result of said probe investigations and inquiries again. We know there have been ongoing attempts over the past many, many elections to interfere with processes in our elections. That's why when we took office, we put in place new protocols and procedures to protect the integrity of our elections in 2019, 2021 specifically, uh, and that allow us to say with certainty that the outcome of those elections were decided by Canadians, not by anybody else. And that should reassure people, but always there's more to do, which is why this uh, public inquiry into foreign interference is going to look at all the measures and processes that are in place, all the processes that we've put in place, and uh, make recommendations about what more we can all do working together to ensure uh, that our elections and our democratic institutions uh, remain uh, robust and protected from foreign interference. Trudeau likes to talk a big game about how his corrupt liberal government made sure to take extreme measures all the way back in 2015, when they unfortunately first came to power to defend against election and political interference from foreign actors looking to exploit Canada. What goes right over his head while giving all of us his fake and goofy confidence smile is the irony of praising his leadership and its hard work dating all the way back to 2015 when we are talking about an interference that happened in 2019 and 2021, while Trudeau and his liberal goons were firmly in power and winning a rig election. He didn't do anything back then, and he will do absolutely nothing right now but slow down the process to a halt, because we all knew he had his dirty hands deep into the sauce and is willing to go again for more control. If only honest Canadians weren't so keen and determined to hold him and his crooked liberal gang accountable. A question was then asked to Trudeau regarding his feelings about the interference that he is dismissing right now, negatively affecting other politicians, namely conservative ones, and leading them to lose because of said rig elections. Trudeau then took it upon himself to respond in the most condescending way possible with remarks against the affected politicians and officials as he states how he understands their anger and frustration, trying to blame everything but themselves for failing to secure the votes needed. And then he postured some more about how his liberal government is doing and has done its very best to stop the interference that already happened and affected many innocent people. Um, I can understand where uh, someone who lost an election is trying to look for reasons uh, other than themselves why they might have lost an election. The reality is we put in place uh, a panel formed by top uh, independent public service servants, uh, a task force uh, staffed by uh, security officials uh, throughout our, uh, our intelligence and security services to ensure the integrity of the 2019-2021 elections. And the conclusion of all those mechanisms is unequivocally that the elections integrity held, that not a single riding or the result of the overall election was impacted or changed because of foreign interference. That is something that Canadians can take comfort in and be confident that because of the mechanisms we put in place and all the studies and reports done after the fact, our elections integrity held 
in 2021 like it did in 2019, and we're going to continue to do everything necessary to make sure that all future elections in this country continue to be decided by Canadians and Canadians alone. What a nice and sympathetic leader that truly understands the grave dangers of treason. The joke here is he understands it better than anyone because he himself is the biggest traitor of all, and every day of his corrupt rule solidifies the statement further and further. Nevertheless, Trudeau just kept hammering home this savior complex during the absolute grilling he had at the hands of journalists seeking answers. He went on to decry once again how the conservatives are partisan hacks and that they are driving harmful and incorrect misinformation about Trudeau being personally involved in the interference inquiry and how the independent panel that he personally chose by the way briefed him more than the conservatives in the inquiry. He kept dismissing all the facts and the data right before his eyes, hoping that it would just go away and not be taken seriously like all the mishandled evidence and testimonies that the panel did not take seriously fearing it would damage Trudeau's reputation and call into question where his true allegiance lies at the Foreign Interference Inquiry alleged that you got more briefings than their leader did about potential foreign interference during the election. They also say the government and security agencies did not take evidence they passed on seriously enough in the days before the, after the vote. Why should Canadians trust that there wasn't a finger on the scale? I think one of the unfortunate things is that this is something that it should bring all parties together to work constructively, and unfortunately, the Conservatives continue to try and play partisan games uh, with the facts and the uh, issues before us that are very, very seriously. We have uh, independent panels that have put out clear reports on what happened and what didn't happen during those elections, which meaning the election integrity held, and we now have a commission of inquiry that is going through all the various facts. Uh, I'm going to trust the Commission to continue to do its work. I look forward to participating uh, next week, and I look forward to the reports of the Commission that will uh, both, I'm certain, reaffirm the integrity of those elections, but also make uh, important recommendations so how we can move forward in a constantly involving uh, threat environment to keep our elections safe and our democratic institutions safe uh, for the future. His words ring hollow and is whining about how the party should remove all partisan aspects of the issue aside to focus on getting to the bottom of things is a sad deflection and a clear act of running away from true accountability. The Canadian people do not trust Trudeau anymore and this Chinese interference has affected Conservative MPs and cost them valuable seats in the Parliament. So of course they would act partisan and on the offensive as they try to bring down a treasonous liberal cable that is driving Canada to the ground. There is clear evidence that Beijing sought to manipulate the election outcome through intimidation tactics and disinformation campaigns targeting candidates who spoke out against the Chinese regime's human rights abuses. Conservative MP Kenny Chu described feeling like he was drowning as the Canadian government stood by and watched during the campaign. After being elected in 2019, Chu became a target for supporting democracy in Hong Kong. He lost his seat in the 2021 election after being subjected to a smear campaign by actors linked to the Chinese government. She was not alone. Former Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole credibly argues that his party lost up to nine ridings due to Chinese interference. The Conservatives' own internal polling projections were vastly outside expected margins in multiple key battleground ridings. O'Toole believes many right-leaning voters who told canvassers they planned to vote Conservatives simply stayed home on election day. Whether through outright intimidation or more subtle influence campaigns, China seemingly succeeded in discouraging opposition to the Liberals in select writings. Even more alarmingly, it appears the Chinese consulate directly interfered in a Liberal nomination contest. Evidence suggests Chinese foreign students were boozed in to vote for former Liberal MP Han Dong, potentially at the direction of Chinese diplomats. Winning the nomination was tantamount to winning the writing itself. Rather than take these disturbing reports seriously, Trudeau seems content to ignore or downplay them. His government has dragged its feet investigating citizen complaints and refused to analyze riding-level data that could detect foreign manipulation. A committee of MPs appointed by Trudeau found significant problems even after all the mishandling of evidence, and yet he pretends all is well. It is a tactic he kept deploying even in the heat of the initial investigation back in early 2023, where he kept defending MP Han Dong without having any evidence or data to back up his frivolous and murky claims. Trudeau was very anxious and weary as he responded to journalists grilling him all the way back in early 2023 with contempt and anger, repeating the same notion about his party doing its best to fix the issue 
and how he was choosing an independent panel with no partisan intentions, completely avoiding the myriad of hard questions about his role, what he knew, who is he protecting, how much money did the liberals make from this farce interference, and with every question, the cycle of ignorance and political posturing repeats itself. Out of that election, what did you know about Chinese government funding of election candidates, and when did you know it, and what did you do about it then? One of the reasons that we are putting in place a special <laughs> rapporteur on top of uh, the work and the full access that NSI COP and NCRA have. The members, the, the conservative, liberal, and NDP, and senators, members of the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, will have access and have access to all top secret documents, all briefings that might have been made or could have been made or were not made when from CSIS to parliamentarians. When did you know? The process around this remains uh, something that we have to make sure is looked at by parliamentarians and by experts who have proper security clearances for them. I understand the extent to which Canadians have very real questions about this. It is of concern to people that China continues to try to interfere and other countries are interfering in our democratic processes in uh, the core of our Mais democracy. Pas, and that, is why, and that is why it is so important that authorities, parliamentarians and experts with the proper clearances can look into everything that was done in a responsible way, in a way that doesn't put at risk You already mentioned that, Mr. Trudeau, but the question was about Mr. Hang Dong. In a way that doesn't compromise uh, the people who work uh, but did you for our national security. Did you compromise the election? As we know, this is an issue that needs to be taken extremely seriously. This government has always taken it extremely seriously. And to be quite honest, I know that no matter what I say, Canadians continue to have questions about what we did and what we didn't. And that is why an independent special rapporteur is going to be able to look at the entire landscape and dig deeply into everything anyone knew at any point and come back with so it. As you can deny knowing ahead of the election, sir, did you not accuse the Canadians of having a cause of this incertitude? You're being accused of having betrayed the Canadian nation because of this information. And with such you already. Canadians do want to know exactly what happened, and that's why an independent and rigorous investigation by a special rapporteur, by NSI COP and ANSERC, will be the way to assure Canadians. He tried to appear like he was in control and on the case, but his actions speak louder than any lousy lies coming from his mouth. And when time came for questioning at the hand of conservative leader Pierre Polyev back in early 2023, Trudeau fumbled harder than he ever could. Polyev questioned Trudeau on never starting a foreign influence registry so that Canadians may know who is lobbying who in the general elections and foreign institutions will have to go through official channels if they want to lobby certain individuals. Critical thinking and brain functions were on vacation that day, with Trudeau responding to the question by resorting to childish ad hominem directed at Polyev's past work and avoiding anything to do with the subject matter. What date will the Prime Minister bring in a foreign influence registry? This is something that his own top public servant has suggested, something he's discussed with the Australian Prime Minister, an idea that he's known about for years and could have consult consulted on all of that time. You have to register if you want to lobby on behalf of the food bank, but you don't have to register if you want to manipulate our democracy on behalf of a foreign dictatorship. That is the case after eight years of this Prime Minister. Eight years is long enough, enough talk. On what date will we have a foreign influence registry? The date. Yeah. The right honourable prime minister. Well, take no lessons from a former minister of democratic institutions whose shining achievement was actually making it harder for Canadians to vote uh, in the elections. Uh, over the past eight years, we have done more than ever previous.
this government uh, to ensure that we have mechanisms and tools uh, and ways to prevent counter foreign interference and reassure Canadians that, that everything is being done. And we will continue to do even more, including uh, a foreign agent registry. We, we know how important it is to do everything to keep Canadians and our institutions safe. Here, here. Polyev then tried cornering Trudeau on the fact that his Liberal Party and a lot of the crooked officials within it have accepted money from China, and as such they should return all the money donated from China now that we know about the nature of the election interference. What an easy question with a clear answer that will get people behind you again. Trudeau definitely used what little brain power he has to declare that he is in fact returning the money that is tarnishing their reputation, right? Wrong. And you know it. Trudeau instead did the unthinkable and went on a tangent regarding election interference happening everywhere else and not Canada alone. What was his goal here exactly, you may ask? Just like every time he is cornered like a scared puppy, he resorts to tangents, repetition, and in extreme cases, outright lies. I asked a second time for the date for a foreign a a influence registry and he refuses to answer the question. Another question is that uh, his department prepared a briefing which said there was a large clandestine transfer of funds earmarked for the federal election from the People's Republic of China consulate in Toronto. Will the Prime Minister uh, commit to, refer to return any of the funds that the Liberal Party, its local associations, his leadership campaign, or any Liberal nomination contestants receive from the PRC? Yes or no? My Honourable Prime Minister. We have long known that polit uh, politicians across political parties, across levels of government and around the world are targeted by foreign interference. This is a fact. Just yesterday, the 2023 Annual Threat Assessment of the U.S. Intelligent Community spoke of China's, quote, willingness to meddle in select election races that involved perceived anti-China politicians. So this is not a threat that Canada faces alone. We continue to work with our partners around the world. But at the same time, let me be clear that any suggestion that any member on either side of this House is not loyal to their constituents, but a foreign government, is not only dangerous, it undermines our democracy. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The question was whether the Prime Minister would commit to the Liberal Party, his leadership campaign, or any other branches of his party returning any funds that they received from this large clandestine transfer. This information was in a briefing note that he received from his own department. He's known about this for months. So once again, will the Prime Minister commit to returning any money that his party or his leadership campaign or any other branch of the Liberal Party got from the PRC? Yes or no? Right Honourable Prime Minister. <clears throat> Despite the efforts of the Leader of the Opposition, Canadians know that foreign interference is not and should never be a partisan issue. That's why we'll be appointing an independent expert to identify any gaps in our system. They will make public recommendations, which could include a formal inquiry or some other independent review process, and we will abide by those recommendations. We also have two national security bodies that will undertake independent reviews of foreign interference in our elections, and we're also taking further immediate action to bolster our institutions, better coordinate government efforts to combat foreign interference, and more. Pierre Polyev and other Conservative MPs then lambasted Trudeau's slow due process and tedious methods to conduct important investigations that will take years before anything concrete or damning comes out to the light. They even warned all of us about him choosing the panel personally that will put him in a favorable position regarding the interference. I'll commit to giving back any money that his party got from this large clandestine transfer. Instead, he delays, as he's been doing. He's known about this for seven years, and now he's got these processes that have no time frame. They could go on for years without us getting answers or action. He allowed this, knowingly allowed this to go ahead in two successive elections, and now he's delaying. What's to stop it from happening again in the next election if we don't get answers before that election happens? Honourable Prime Minister. It's a bit rich for the former...
minister of democratic institutions who did nothing to counter foreign interference when he was in charge of our elections. All he did was make it harder for marginalized Canadians to vote in those right. elections. What we actually did starting eight years ago was bring in a plan to protect democracy, yeah. which includes notifying Canadians in the event our ability to have a free and fair election is threatened by including on a panel of senior public servants informed by national security agencies and reviewed after every election. That's where Canadians can have confidence in our institutions right. and in our elections. We brought in rapid response mechanisms, digital citizen initiatives, yep. and a PSYCOP and other institutions. Exactly. Mr. Speaker, uh, there are uh, two alleged police stations that are paid by the Chinese government on Quebec's territory, but the Prime Minister wants to be the one to choose who should inquire into that. However, we know that uh, for years now, the Prime Minister has been getting reports from the intelligence services. He has done nothing. He wants to act alone, and he wants to act secretly. Hasn't the Prime Minister disqualified himself by ignorance and negligence? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it is important to be very clear about the different issues. Obviously, we will be finding an independent expert to investigate the, the issue of foreign interference in our democratic institutions. But when it comes to the police stations throughout the country, and to see some in Montreal is also very concerning, I can tell you that the RCMP and CSIS are already acting on that front. They are going to continue to do their work to protect Canadians, and particularly uh, diaspora Canadians throughout the world, throughout Canada. He's trying to give himself an out by slowly dragging everything around for an increasingly unnecessary amount of time, and then he will slink away from accountability scot-free. And now we are seeing the results of this ongoing malicious scheme. The Conservatives were right to sound the alarm about China's election interference. The evidence is clear that Beijing attempted to shape the outcome in 2021. Canada's sovereignty and democratic governance are under threat by the Chinese regime's aggressive worldwide influence operations. The future of free and fair elections in Canada is at stake, and it is all thanks to Trubio and his crooked liberal gang. Only one common sense solution lies at the end of the dark tunnel. Trudeau must go. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau is going to be held accountable next week when it comes time for him to talk to the inquiry? Or will it be a soft session that guarantees Trudeau may never face justice? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.